Well, day two of my epic weekend in Belper. A bit of a different one today. Uh, I drove, because the forecast was not very good, so I drove to uh, Cromford, where I was yesterday, uh, and then I drove on to Eam. And Eam is a plague village, or was a plague village, and they kept themselves themselves, so the plague didn't spread outside the village. That was fascinating. Got the bike out, went for a little ride, not very long, seven miles, but a thousand feet of climbing, would you believe, in seven miles. Uh, then went on to Buxton, which wasn't really my favourite town. And now I've come to uh, Belpa, and I'm following the Heritage Walk in a leaflet which I found in Kirsten's B&B place. And this is a nail shop, which I thought was a 19th century version of a nail bar where I could get my nails done. But in fact, I was misinformed. A nail shop was a place where they made nails. And this is it. They don't make them here anymore, I don't think. Uh, all the people in, uh, in Belper, their fingers have got nails, so they don't have to make nails anymore. But um, this is where it was made in the 19th century. It's interesting. I just met another really nice couple. People are very nice in the north. You hear about that, don't you? But you don't really believe it. And they're a really friendly couple, and I was chatting to them. They had a dog. They were looking after the dog because their son had gone to a wedding. And they decided to go for a walk around Belper. And they discovered this nail shop purely by accident, whereas, of course, I discovered it because I was looking at the guidebook. So, uh, very interesting place. This is a close-up of the door of the nail shop. Not sure you're learning anything from that. There's a knocker there. And there is the original sign for the nail shop. And uh, you could go in the nail shop, you could get an anvil. Uh, you could also hire a horse and, uh, a horse and uh, man for a couple of days, a kind of early version of the horse and van. Uh, you could also hire a cock if uh, you needed one. And who doesn't in their life, after all, now and again? I suspect this is an artist's impression of the man making the nails as opposed to the actual man making the nails drawn from life. Well, I suppose it could have been. You never know with these things. That's a good sign, isn't it? Dog fowlers, beware. You are being watched and will be reported. I wonder if I'm being watched. As I'm, I mean, who is the watcher watching the watcher who is taking the film of the people who are being watched? And who will I get reported to? Perhaps I'll get reported to the uh, town police who will come around and say, why are you going around taking pictures of signs? I haven't got a good answer for them. Well, I'm now walking down uh, Joseph Street. Uh, I've been to see the Unitarian Chapel, uh, which I didn't take any film of because it was behind a fence. And there were a number of Unitarians in there uh, worshipping, so I didn't want to disturb them um, by asking them awkward questions like, uh, what is Unitarianism? Um, so I left them to it and didn't take any film. But it wasn't a particularly interesting building. But uh, I'm walking down, holding the camera in front of me, in case you're wondering whether somebody uh, uh, like my cameraman, or camera woman, in fact, was, it worse than, was the person walking in front of me, walking backwards, allowing me to walk forwards. And it's a bit of a rough road, which is why it's a bit jittery. This uh, rather impressive edifice uh, was the East Mill. Uh, 1912. It wasn't built in 1912. Uh, it was built in uh, uh, 1650, just after the Civil War. But they added the date, 1912, to uh, confuse the Roundheads, who weren't very happy with this building. And this, um, this kind of gangway here, or bridge, as they call it, uh, joined the East Mill uh, with the West Mill, which has now been demolished. And they say in the 1800s, uh, holes were added so that muskets could be fired at any troublemakers. I, I can't see any holes unless that, where my finger is, is one of the holes where the muskets poked out. I might, I might need to be careful because I wouldn't want to be regarded as a troublemaker and uh, therefore be uh, uh, subject to musket, musket fire. I don't know they still do that. Possible, I suppose. Well, no, I, I, no, I have seen it. There is a hole. You see right in the centre of the screen. Uh, there is a hole and there's a musket pointing at me. Bang! Oh God, I've been hit. No, I haven't. I'm only pretending. No need to get excited. No need to call the authorities. 
course, it could have been the authorities who fired at me, only they didn't fire at me, I was just pretending. This uh, uh, particular water fountain was built in 1858, when uh, people were under the impression that water came out of the mouths of lions. Of course, they, uh, they know better now, of course, water comes from the mouths of elephants. But uh, David Attenborough is to be thanked for that particular piece of knowledge. And this is the weir over the River Derwent. Isn't that, isn't that attractive? Now uh, these uh, particular, particular waterfalls uh, were used as the design for Niagara Falls, which were then uh, constructed in the, uh, in the 19th century, uh, after they'd seen these waterfalls and thought they were rather impressive, which of course they are, as I'm sure you'll agree. We're now walking along the River Gardens. Isn't this pretty? Uh, river Gardens, so called, because they are gardens by the side of the river. Sometimes you don't need Wikipedia. Sometimes you can just work things out for yourself. Anticline paint. Do you ever, like me, wonder what, what that actually is? You can't see any paint on the wall, can you? So should I try and climb the wall? Or will it, is there a kind of force field that will stop me because there's anti-climb paint on it? So it's a fragile roof. Well, how do they know unless somebody's been up there and walked along it and then fallen down and said, oh, guys. There's a, there's a whole skip here, which has been designed to hold one Domino's pizza box. If that is your Domino's pizza box, can you please come and retrieve it? Because this skip is not designed for your pizza box. It's designed for mine. It says only 100% mozzarella. I mean, what would 99% what would mozzarella be? I mean, what would the other 1% be? You can speculate, can't you? Gin? Spring onions? Gluten-free flour? Vegan free flour? Can you have vegan free flour? Can you have flour free vegans? You would in my world. What was that blur song? Can you remember? Park life boats, book now, we are open. Park life. Park life boats, we are open, book now. Park life. Do you remember that? It was a big hit. A long time ago. A squawking bird there, didn't like my singing. This is Belper, the strut mill complex. I wouldn't like to. I wouldn't like to have a strut mill complex. Would you? Doesn't sound very nice. Just common old garden madness would probably suit me. I think I've probably already got it. Now you will know if you've seen any of my previous videos. Links to my videos up above if you haven't seen them yet. Motorcyclist in the background there. That all swans in the United Kingdom are in fact owned by Prince William. And it, oddly enough, these particular swans can be hired as uh, kind of rowing boats or pedalos. And blow me down, is that the expression? Blow me down. If that isn't Prince William sitting there waiting to take your money so you can climb onto, uh, pardon the expression, climb onto, even into one of his swans. So make sure you treat it nice. Say thank you in the morning, perhaps leave a few quid. And uh, there you are, you can have one of Prince William's swans. I wouldn't have one of Prince Andrew's, don't know where it's been. This is really very attractive, isn't it? Very attractive indeed. I did want to go on to the jetty to get a close-up picture of uh, uh, Prince William sitting in his swan. And I got told off by the man. The man said, Prince William doesn't want you going on his jetty, touching his swans. So get off it. Get off the jetty. He said it in a Derbyshire accent, so I had trouble understanding him, but he, he shouted at me and used a big stick. And in the end, I got the message, which I suppose I do eventually. I'm intrigued by those swans. I mean, 
How does William get hold of them? Where does he do his training? Do they reproduce? Can you get them mounted? That's enough talk about Prince William and his swans. Now, interesting fact about this particular bandstand. Uh, you'll be familiar with the, uh, uh, the pop, pop music combo Queen, named after our dear Queen, um, who were from, they're all from Belper, and their first gig was actually at this bandstand in the presence of, would you believe it, uh, the Queen, uh, who said, why is this, why are these group of musicians naming themselves after me? And they said, why not? And she said, fair enough. And so the name stuck. This is the Park Life Cafe at the Little Swiss Tea Rooms. Park Life! Park Life! Uh, unfortunately it's closed, so I, I can't get a coffee or a tea or an ice cream or a Diet Coke, other drinks are available. Um, so instead I help myself to uh, a small glass of sanitizer, which was remarkably refreshing, actually. So if you, you can drink sanitizer, not recommended, uh, drink sanitizer and wash your hands in tea. And it works just as well as uh, doing it the proper way round. Who'd have thunk it? Who'd have thunk it? I suppose if I'd come earlier, I could have had a, a tea. Oh, there's the lady closing up. Um, perhaps she wasn't happy with my singing Park Life. Park Life! Don't blame her. Looks nice though, doesn't it? Well, it's hard to tell. It's nice. Uh, it's a nice kind of shed. There's the lady coming out again. We've come across some more uh, species or some more, what do you call it, variants? Variants of the fowl family. My knowledge of birds and, and wildlife generally and nature really is absolutely appalling. I mean, I don't know whether these are geese or ducks or... Uh, is it Canada geese? Canada ducks? I don't know. I mean, they're all the same once they're in the oven, if you ask me. A bit of butter, a bit of garlic, a bit of gravy, a few potatoes. Pot of Yorkshire tea, you've got yourself a decent Sunday lunch. They're squawking then, they don't like me talking about their, their brethren as dinner. Can't say I blame them. If there are any cannibals around starting talking about me as dinner, I'd probably get a bit nervous too and start squawking. I think they're going to gang up on me. They heard me talking. They said, well, you know, we're the Queen's animals. And I'm going to say, you're not. You're not. Only, qu only swans. Are the Queen's birds, or is it is it Prince William's birds? You don't you don't belong to any member of the royal family. You're just birds or fowl. What's the difference between a bird and fowl? I really must do something about my knowledge one of these days. This uh, this uh, mill building, impressive building, isn't it? It's a shame now. It's it's pretty much fallen into disrepair. I was going to say disrepute there, but I don't think it's a house of ill repute. I imagine one of these days it will be converted into expensive flats for uh, uh, yuppies, IT consultants, key workers, uh, other people who are essential to uh, the economy, perhaps non-executive directors of the National Health Service like Gina Colladangelo will be awarded uh, one of these flats by a grateful nation for uh, getting that useless Hancock uh, out of the government. The fit pit. The fit pit doesn't look entirely healthy, does it? I think the fit pit is a bit unfit at the moment. But I could be wrong. Could be wrong. Boxer size. I get a lot of boxer size when I do my uh, unboxings. I, um, uh, it keeps me busy. It keeps me off the streets for hours when I'm boxer sizing. Or unboxer sizing, as I call it. You should try it. Perhaps I should patent that. I could do videos about it. People could pay me to watch my videos and then they'd get fit. I could say, unbox and get fit with jewels. That's a, it's quite a snappy title, isn't it? And the walk, this heritage, Belper Heritage Walk, uh, starts and ends in this street, which is called Long Row. And is the street where Kirsten's Airbnb property is located. So you are uh, staying in a historic, property in an historic area of a 
historic city. So you can't get much more historic than that. The only thing is, I would say, I would warn you, that uh, we are walking up some cobbles. And these cobbles are pretty hard on your tyres and your wheels and your suspension and just about everything else. So if you've got quite a lot of hair dye uh, in your hair, if you've got recent fillings, uh, if you have loose clothing, um, it might be wise to be a bit careful as you're driving up this street because all of those things could be could be shaken out. But these really are very attractive houses. Uh, Kirsten's house, which is number 28, uh, available on Airbnb. I'll leave a link down the bottom of this video. It is a really, really nice house. Two double bedrooms, sleeps four people, uh, all mod comms, everything that you need for a really enjoyable night stay or weekend stay or uh, however long you want to stay, really. And this is Kirsten's Cottage, number 28 Long Row, which is available on Airbnb, and I'll leave a link down below. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this particular spin around Old Belper. Uh, I've been Julian Hutchings. Um, I still am Julian Hutchings. Actually, if you like my videos, if you like any of my videos, even if you don't like my videos, uh, my videos raise money for the Vine Food Bank which is in Croydon, um, it's in southern England, nowhere near Belper, uh, but it's in the United Kingdom. So every time you watch one of my videos, you're helping to raise money for people who are less fortunate than ourselves. So thanks very much for watching and see you next time.